On Warfare Those who used arms in ancient times did not do so to expand their territory or obtain wealth. They did so for the survival and continuity of nations on the brink of destruction and extinction, to settle disorder in the world, and to get rid of what harmed common people. Sage's use of arms is like combing hair or thinning sprouts. A few are removed for the benefit of many. There is no harm greater than killing innocent people and supporting unjust rulers. There is no calamity worse than exhausting the world's resources to provide for the desires of an individual. People have feelings about food and clothing that things cannot satisfy. Therefore, when they live together, they do not share equally. If they do not get what they want, they fight. When they fight, the strong terrorize the weak, and the bold invade the timid. The military operations of effective leaders are considered philosophically, planned strategically, and supported justly. They are not intended to destroy what exists, but to preserve what is perishing. Therefore, when they hear that a neighboring nation oppresses its people, they raise armies and go to the border, accusing that nation of injustice and excess. When the armies reach the suburbs, the commanders say to their troops, Do not cut down trees. Do not disturb graveyards. Do not burn crops or destroy stores. Do not take common people captive and do not steal domestic animals. Then the announcement is made, the ruler of such and such a country shows contempt for heaven and the spirits, imprisoning and executing the innocent. This is a criminal before heaven, an enemy to the people. The coming of the armies is to oust the unjust and restore the virtuous. Those who lead plunderers of the people in defiance of nature die themselves, and their clans are extinguished. Those who get their families to listen to reason are enfranchised with their families. Those who get their villages and towns to listen are rewarded with their villages and towns. Those who get their countries to listen are enfiefed with their countries, and those who get their states to listen are ennobled in their states. The conquering of the nation does not extend to its people. It removes the leadership and changes the government honoring excellent knights, exposing the wise and good, helping the orphaned and widowed, treating the poor and destitute mercifully, freeing prisoners, and rewarding the meritorious. The peasants await such armies with open doors, preparing food to supply them, only worried that they won't come. So when the leadership is unguided, the people wish for military action as they wish for rain during a drought and seek to quench their thirst. Who will cross swords with a righteous army under these conditions? The supreme attainment of a just military action is to finish its mission without fighting. As for military actions of latter-day societies, even though the rulers are unguided and lack the way, all of them set up fortifications for defense. And when they go on the attack, it is not to stop the violent and remove the destructive. It is to invade land and enlarge their territory. This is why things come to where there are corpses lying about with their blood streaming together before them, yet successful leadership rarely emerges. It is because it is their own contrivance. Leaders are acting on their own account. When armies lose the way they are weak. When they attain the way, they are strong. When generals lose the way, they are inept. When they attain the way, they are skillful. When nations attain the way, they survive. When they lose the way, they perish. The way means to embody the round and emulate the square. Turn away from the dark and embrace the light. Be flexible culturally and firm militarily. Act unobtrusively, yet express enlightenment. Change and transform without fixation and attain the source of unity, thereby to respond without bias. This is called spiritual illumination. The round is sky, 
The square is earth. The sky is round and has no sides, so you cannot see its form. The earth is square and has no edge, so no one can look into its door. The sky nurtures creation without form. The earth develops growth without calculation. Who knows what is stored in the vastness of their totality? When people serve as militia in the same spirit as children doing something for their parents or older siblings, then the force of their power is like an avalanche. Who can withstand it? Having extensive territory and a large population is not enough to constitute strength. Having strong armor and sharp weapons is not enough to win victory. Having high walls and deep moats is not enough to ensure security. Having strict orders and penalties is not enough to be authoritative. Those who carry out policies conducive to destruction will perish, even if large. When a thousand people are of like mind, they gain the power of a thousand people. When ten thousand people are of different minds, then no one is really useful. Only when commanders, soldiers, officials, and citizens operate as one body can they do battle in response to an opponent. So, go into action after strategy has been determined. Act once measures have been decided. When commanders have no dubious schemes, soldiers are not of two minds. There will be no signs of laxness in action or coarseness of speech, no tentativeness in operations. Response to opponents will be quick. Deployment will be swift. So, the people are the body of the commanders, and the commanders are the heart of the people. If the heart is true, the limbs and body follow it closely. If the heart is suspicious, the limbs and body are out of control.